The NFL draft is just over three weeks away, but there's still plenty of talent remaining in free agency. Tony Wiggins and I will examine the best free agents, plus Bill Belichick. Did he get it wrong again? And we'll talk quarterbacks with the NFL draft looming. You are locked on NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. And welcome in to a special edition of Locked On NFL, a Wednesday edition. He's Tony Wiggins. I'm James Erpine. Thank you so much for making us your first listen wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you hit that follow button and subscribe on YouTube. And Tony, we're stack packed and loaded for uh, the first week of April here on Locked On NFL. We are, man. You know, getting close to the draft. I'm not uh, bored yet. I am to the point, though, where I'm like, man, let's just get this thing over because of the speculation with, of course, the team that I cover in Jacksonville sitting right at the top. Yeah, it, it, there's, there's a lot of speculation on what they could do. We're going to talk about what all 32 teams could do by looking at the best remaining free agents. Who is going to go off the board? Tyron Matthew visiting the Saints on Tuesday. He's naturally the best free agent safety available. We got Stefan Gilmore out there. Got some other guys we're going to touch on as well. But let's start with the man they call the Honey Badger. He's visiting the Saints. It seems like a natural fit. And who knows, by the time people see this and hear this, maybe he signs with New Orleans because it's been talked about for months and months and months, it seems like. What do you think about that potential fit? I, I can't imagine there be there would be a, a more perfect fit. Um, with Malcolm Jenkins retiring and leaving a, a, a veteran hole, in that secondary one that has been very very good by the way they brought back pj williams and obviously they have chauncey gardner who gets on everybody's nerves including mine he has to be chauncey cj has to be the dude man that probably epitomizes this thought you love him because he's on your team but you can't stand him <laughs> when he's not on your team but uh, to have a, a guy like honey badger uh, with a guy like CJ who is um uh, well CG who is very very instinctive mm -hmm. and they, they just have this navigation system you can't go wrong and it's a match made in heaven uh because Honey Badger is LSU and he is uh Louisiana and uh I'm sure uh Ross Jackson would, would probably agree with us if he was here with us today host of Locked On NFL of course and Locked On Saints that you know it, it just doesn't get more perfect of a match than that and um as of yesterday uh matthew was visiting the uh yeah. saints while he was he was in town with family he just said, let me go over here and see what they got going on and uh i thought i saw him with dennis allen so if that's the case i wouldn't be surprised if something is done by the time people hear this yeah and and you know we'll see there another top free agent like i said stefan gilmore still out there i'm a little shocked Kinda Kind, sure. kind of wild to me. I was just about to say, it's kind of wild to me that he's just out there um, because cornerback is such a premium position, right? You got uh, Ahmad Sass Gardner visiting the Texans on Tuesday. They pick third overall and 13th overall. Derek Stingley uh, is one of the top corners in the draft. He's going to work out this week. Like cornerback is valuable. And so you got a guy who's a former All-Pro just a few years ago that's out there. I'm going to ask you, do you think the NFL just thinks Gilmore is done? Do you think he's just asking for too much? Because now it's getting to the point where it's kind of like, man, why would a top, top cornerback still be on the market? I think he's probably doing what Jadavian Clowney did last year. And that's wait, wait, wait till late, wait until I think Jadavian waited to right before training camp. And he still got like $15 million. I don't mm -hmm. think he's going to price himself out of the market. I think what he's doing is, is, is sort of smart. I, I think he's probably going to end up earning some money because you can best believe that there are going to be teams that will look at other teams, especially teams in their division, and go, wow, they got too many receivers, man. We need a guy who can stop the, the – you know, we need a guy who can stop him or stop them. And they didn't get what they wanted in the draft. And I, I think the run on the corners is going to go really, really fast. And I think he's just going to sit back – Twitter his little thumbs 
wait, find a contender that has some cap space. Yeah, throw me that two year deal with twenty five million dollars <laughs> in it, you know, with eighteen guaranteed or whatever, or, or fifteen guaranteed or whatever, and we're gonna have a chance to to win, mm-hmm. like the Chiefs, um, the Rams. Because the Rams, find, they, I don't know where they're getting it. They might be printing their own money or, or whatever, but they're finding cash. I don't know if they – because of all of those <laughs> vendors they have in that big old stadium. But they, I don't even know how they're getting the money. But I'm going to bring up Ross again because Ross says the cap is fake because I don't know where the Saints get their money from either. But wherever they're getting it from, watch out for those types of teams, those contenders. As we move uh, closer and closer, I, it might even be after the draft. But he's Clowney's out there too. Y- yeah, again, I, no, I, again, yeah. Clowney's out there too, and 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 that's the thing, man. I I, I think uh, you're right. Maybe Gilmore's holding out for one more payday because this was probably it as far as big time paydays go for him. And maybe he doesn't want a one year deal. I wouldn't either if I'm him at this stage. Maybe two to three year contract. And, um, you, you know, is there anyone else that stands out to you? I mean, you got the Julio Joneses, the A.J. Greens. They're past their prime now, but they are big names that are out there. Anyone else uh, tickle your fancy a little bit, pop off the page when you're talking about big-time free agents available? First of all, it's easy to tickle me. I, I don't have a fancy, though, because I don't know what a fancy is. But, uh, no, those, those are the main <laughs> guys. Those are the main guys we we were talking about. And, and – there are a handful of dudes that wherever you sign them, they're a starter from day one, right? And you know it. But a lot of those guys, they're not going to Atlanta. They're not going to Jacksonville. They're not going to – I wouldn't be surprised if we look up and Stephon Gilmore is attached to the Cowboys at some point because that's kind of a Dallas Cowboy thing that they probably do. Um, it's going to be these teams that have money, but they mm-hmm. also have a little bit of a shot to make it. Clowney was, you know, just like Clowney, he went to Cleveland to go play opposite of uh, Miles last year. I think you'll see a similar situation with Gilmore, and I think he'll they'll just probe, probe, and wait, and they'll hone in on those teams that are kind of close, mm-hmm. that they can make a difference, but they can also make some cash. And I think for a veteran, it's a smart thing to do. I wouldn't want to go and spend the last years of my career on a losing, uh, losing franchise either. Sure, and he's used to winning, and he – did a lot of winning with the New England Patriots, and that's where we're going to go next because Tony Wiggins, well, when we had our pre-show meeting, you didn't like what Bill Belichick has done, uh, his his latest move, and, well, you kind of reflected on the Patriots, so we'll dive into them yep. coming up next. But first, I'm going to tell you about Shady Rays, where you should get your sunglasses. If you haven't heard of Shady Rays, well, now you have. It's an independent sunglasses company that gives you all the features of $200 sunglasses For a fraction of the price, you're getting durable frames, premium high-end finishes. People are like, man, what what kind of sunglasses are those? So make sure that you check them out. And they include lost and broken protection for every pair. They're going to send you a brand new pair if you lose them, no matter what happened. And if I know me, I lose sunglasses all the time. So you got to get your hands on some Shady Rays right now. Plus 10 meals donated to Fight Hunger in America so head to ShadyRays.com, use code Locked On, and you're going to get 50% off, 5-0, 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. That's code Locked On for their best deal of the season. It's about to be summer across the country, and you're going to need some sunglasses. So go to ShadyRays.com and use promo code Locked On for 50% off two pairs of polarized sunglasses. On a Wednesday, you get James and you get Tony here on Locked On NFL. And that's why you got us here on Locked On NFL. And we appreciate you making us your first listen of the day. Also, check out this. If you're checking it out, you're already checking it out. But I really need you to check out the Locked On NFL YouTube page. It's not just on Wednesdays. It's every single day with guys giving you a different perspective from around the NFL. So make sure you check it out. I'm going to check out the Patriots right now, man, because I know the answer to this uh, hypothetical question that I'm going to pose. It's not even hypothetical. They, they, when you look back, of course, at their dynasty and their history and Bill Belichick being the GOAT, You would be fooling yourself if you said they did everything right. Because this process and this season that we're in with free agency as well as the draft has been the one thing, if you look back on paper, they kind of screwed this up. They haven't – Bill Belichick and that crew, they were Tom Brady and Gronk. And then the way that they do business 
has really saved them from a lot of uh, criticism. And the latest is this deal that they gave up a third round draft pick or whatever it was for Devontae Parker. You trade for a player that the team he was on didn't want. They didn't want him so bad. They chose a kid in the top, at number seven last year in Jalen Waddle. And then they gave Tyreek Hill uh, $162 million per year to come to South Florida. It's like, <laughs> that's a pretty bad indictment on a guy. And then you sit there and you trade a third round pick for him. I just don't understand. And this is after they gave up a second round for Muhammad Sanu a couple of years ago. I do not understand Bill Belichick and the way he values draft picks and it really mar it's really uh, uh, it's really one of the greatest things of all time to look back and look at their draft and free agent record and realize they won all of those championships. Well, they can't get it right at wide receiver. No. And that's been the case for a lot of their dynasty. I mean, honestly, I mean, you had failed experiment after failed experiment, failed draft pick after failed draft pick. Everyone remembers Randy Moss. Well, that's great. That was 15 years ago. OK. Mm -hmm. And, you know, since then, they, you know, they had traded for Chad Johnson. That didn't work out. Uh, they they, they had traded for Welker. On, they took uh, Welker from Miami. So the last time they years did, ago. Right. 15, so last time they did this. My man's Miami, a wide receivers coach now. You know, I, I know like, it, right. I know it. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I, I was in high school when Wes Welker was was went from the Dolphins to the Patriots. So let's just put that in perspective a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, they lived off that. And then the, the former quarterback out of Kent State, Julian Edelman, developed and blossomed. They right. hit it right with Gronk. You're right. I mean, they've gotten it right. But over the past decade, where where have they gotten it right? What, right. what picks Nikhil Harry over DK Metcalf? Are you kidding me? Nikhil Harry over AJ Brown? Are you kidding me? Nikhil Harry um, over Debo Samuel? Are you kidding me? I mean, the list goes on and on. on and and that's on. just one draft. It's like, are you what? What is happening? And so, two things. One, I agree they've gotten it wrong in, in a lot of areas, and that's why, including free agency last year. You, you, Johnu Smith, that deal didn't work. <laughs> that didn't work out well, right? They were going to go this two tight end set with this rookie quarterback, and it was going to be. No, nah, that didn't work out much, uh, you, you know, well for the Patriots. And it kind of limited them to what they could do or not do this offseason. As far as the Devontae Parker deal, here's why I don't hate it. You said third round pick, but you didn't you didn't mention they get a fifth round back. So that and it's in different years, but they're basically moving back. 60 something picks it's not the end of the world there and it could be less than that depending on where the teams are drafting but they're moving back in the draft essentially and they're getting a guy who is under contract and i do think he could probably and not only is he an upgrade but he could probably help mac jones so a couple of things here here's why i like the deal and part of it is is because they've been so poor at drafting receivers if you're bad at something and you look and you're like, okay, well, this is what Parker's good at, what he's not good at. He's an upgrade in these areas for us. I understand it because you have a young quarterback. Doesn't mean he would be my top target via trade. Doesn't mean that I would necessarily go that route. Um, that being said, I, I do understand it because you have to get that young quarterback some kind of weapons, some kind of artillery. And um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's crazy to think about, but they cannot get the wide receiver room right. I mean, who's the number one there? If your number one is Devontae Parker, let's just look at the teams that were in the Super Bowl last year. Mm -hmm. The Bengals, Devontae Parker is the fourth receiver on the Bengals. The Rams, they swapped out OBJ for Allen Robinson, or Robert Woods for Allen Robinson, if you want to look at it that way. Either way, I mean, Devontae Parker is the fourth receiver there, too. So it's... uh. I, to your point, I don't love it. I understand it because he is an upgrade, but that's a testament to how bad they are from a skill position standpoint. It's just the, it's, it's the whole thing with them. A couple of years back, and this wasn't even that long ago, they, took, they drafted Sony Michelle, and, and then like they, they, yep. took a, they took a six foot two and a half left tackle from Georgia in the first round. And these things just, Tony, Sonny Michelle's with somebody else now with the Rams. He just won a Super Bowl and they traded him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just like for me, I, I remember all of the guys that they get in and it's like, you know, okay, well, what is he? What is he going to do? And, and then you look back over these drafts and you think because of the success, you want to give them all of this credit. But then you go to one of these draft history sites and you look at their picks and you're like, he did nothing. He did nothing. He did nothing. And you almost go, it, it's a miracle 
that that they won with the guy. Now, the thing that we talked about is when they do hit, like Brady, you get a GOAT in the sixth round. Uh, Gronk, he's the best ever at his position, probably. And you get him in the second round. You get Richard Seymour and you get Ty Law. So over the years now, they have absolutely hit up Barry Bonds out of the park home runs. But they haven't, man. When you look at their record, they have not done in the draft and even in free agency what you would expect on the surface. Now, here's one thing I will do because I say this all the time. I'm going to give you credit for saying the smartest thing on this podcast today. And that is, is we look at the third round versus the fifth round. I was told by a personnel dude that they look at it as numbers. So Mm -hmm. say if somebody has the last pick of the first round, well, people just go, it's a first round pick. Well, it's 32. Okay. And they're trading that for a third rounder and something else, right? To your example. Mm -hmm. But the team that they're trading with, say it's the Jaguars at 65, right? Yep. So you think first and a third, that's two rounds. It's a matter of 33 picks. Yep. It's numbers. And especially if they look on their draft board and 17 of those guys that they have between those, they have no interest in taking them because they're already fortified at that position. So now to them, you take that 35 minus that, that's 18 spots. That's mm-hmm. not, that's how they look at it sometimes. So I think as fans, sometimes as fans and people that cover the team, we look at it as rounds. And that's because the selections are done on different days. Thursday is the first round. Friday is the second and third. And then Saturday, we act like the, you know, the that's a whole big gap. And it's not, it's really not that big of a gap in between those players. So I will give you credit for that. Well, look at you giving me credit. We're about to give credit to the to the teams that, well, haven't been as tempted or haven't gone the quarterback number one overall route. We'll do that next right here on Locked On NFL. I want to tell you about Built Bar, man. You better know that it is the best tasting protein bar in the world. Built Bar is actually I eat it and I think it's a candy bar. It is so good because that's what Built Bar is. Built Bar is covered with 100% chocolate. They have these protein infused uh, puffs. This is outrageous, man. This is a lemon dipped cheesecake. Are you serious? Yeah. This ain't your average waxy and crumbly and tastes like tree bark protein bar. This is the stuff that you would normally taste something like this and it gets you in trouble, but it doesn't get you in trouble with Built Bars because the macros are off the chain. Very low calories, low sugar, low carbs, but packed with protein for your pre and post workout or even just a snack during the day. And you can get them at Built.com with the promo code LOCKED15. You can actually get a 15% off of your next order. So make sure you find your favorite flavors. Mine is the salted caramel. I like that banana cream pie and the puffs too. But you do your own research. Order an assorted box. Make sure you lose, use LOCK15 as your promo code at built.com. Tony, you brought up something during our pre-show meeting, and there's been a ton of talk about non-quarterbacks first overall. And the team you cover, the Jacksonville Jaguars, certainly aren't going to take a quarterback with the first pick in this year's draft. Now, I guess, could they trade down? Could someone move up? Maybe. But it doesn't seem that likely given this quarterback class and something that you found in your research, which makes a lot of sense with me just thinking about it now, non quarterbacks going with the top pick tend to work out more than they don't. They do. They absolutely do. And in the few cases that they didn't work out, um, the the, I go back 20, 21, 22 years, Courtney Brown was injured, but Courtney Brown was a very good player in college and was expected to be a very good pro. He got injured. But after that, from 2000 on up, I'm going to name every non-quarterback chosen number one. And it's it's not, the list is not very long. Okay. Mario Williams, very good career. Wasn't great. Mm -hmm. I mean, wasn't, he was great at times, but wasn't hall of fame. Wasn't Julius Peppers, but he was very, very good. All right. So after Mario Williams move up a little bit, two years later, Jake Long, Pretty good player, had a nice career. Mm-hmm. They, a lot of people think Bill Parcells should have taken Matt Ryan, but he didn't. So had a very good career. Move up a little bit more. Eric Fisher is a Super Bowl champion, 
guy got a big second contract in a year back when he got picked in 13. Everybody says that's not a real good draft, but he turned out to be better than Luke Jokel, who was chosen number two, and maybe about the same or just a little smidgen under Lane Johnson, who was also a top five pick. And he's still out there now. For those, and he's still out there, right. Offensive he's another, line, hungry teams. Right, he's another guy. He played in Indy last year. Jadavion Clowney, we just mentioned him, has not had a bust career, has, has been good, probably not as good as the highlights from Michigan, South Carolina would have indicated that he would be. And, <laughs> and Miles Garrett. So I just named you like Who has five, been the real deal. He's been who the has best been the of real all deal. of them. Right. Yeah. So I just named you five guys and none of them are bust guys. Why am I bringing this up? It's because the Jaguars have the number one pick and they don't need a quarterback. And whoever, uh, if they trade the pick, nobody's taking a quarterback at the top of this draft. So what we're getting in this draft is you're going to get a guarantee. And I've heard people use this phrase and I'm going to let you comment on it. You're going to get a, probably the closest thing you can get to a guarantee of having a guy that won't bust on you. Now, he might not end up being the best player, but you have a draft. You will have a, almost a guarantee based on history that whoever it is is going to have a solid career. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's fair. Let me ask you this. I, I would say that the past two number ones, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back, three number ones. Who was the number one in 2019? Was that Kyler? That was Kyler. Right. right? It's, it's it, This is the way it's gone. It's, it's so, in reverse. So Trevor, three, Burrow. Yep. Kyler Baker. Baker. Okay. So Baker, uh, you know, mm -hmm. up and down. Kyler, I think he's legit, even though there's been some drama around him. Burrow, it goes without saying. And Trevor, I think, isn't going to bust. So let, let's just go the past couple of years, though. Burrow, Lawrence, whoever they take, whether it's Aiden Hutchinson or whoever the Jaguars take first overall this year. It, even though you said all of that, I think the most likely bust of those three is still Hutchinson. Versus Trevor. I mean, Trevor Lawrence is a freak. I don't think he's a bust. If he, no. if he ends up being a bust, it's because Jacksonville failed him, not because he failed Jacksonville. Like, if Burrow ended up being a bust, and I think he's already passed that, it would have been the Bengals failing him, not because he was a failure, right? Or like, you know, it's – and so that's the part of it is I, I think we have gotten to a point now where the reason why quarterback isn't being mentioned first overall is because there isn't that. And there is risk with all of these guys in big enough flaws. Every quarterback has a flaw, but big enough flaws where it's like, ah, let's let's go elsewhere. Elsewhere to a point where Aiden Hutchinson, who is not Chase Young by most evaluators that, that I've talked to, isn't on that level, is still probably going to go first overall. And I'm speaking for you. You know it closer. But it, it feels like he's going to be the pick. And if he is going to be the pick, that's great. But it's also a testament, I think, where the top of this draft – it might be better to pick third or fourth versus first because you're you getting a same level of player, honestly. Yeah, and I and I honestly think you could probably go back even a little bit further than that. And um, here's here, here's the thing, and I mentioned this yesterday on the Locked On Jags pods or two days ago. Here's the one thing I will tell you: if you're if the player you get is decent and you win, no one will care. Sure. Because you're a winner, and what what happens to the guy who's the eighth best player on a team that wins it all? He looks really good, right? Yep. Now, yep. if you don't win, and he sucks or stinks, then you're gonna hear about it, right? Yep. Here's where you also hear about it. Even if your guy is okay, if the guy you don't take is lights out in the NFL, like all of those people sitting around that didn't take mm -hmm. Michael Parsons now. That's yep. where you're going to hear from it from your fan base. Because yep. I'll give you a basketball example. When we say Portland passed up Michael Jordan for Sam Bowie, you forget they weren't the only team that passed up Michael Jordan. So did the Houston Rockets. But they took Olajuwon. So nobody gives a damn that they didn't take Jordan in Houston because Olajuwon was also great. and was probably the second best player of that era. And but, they got titles. Right. Yeah. He got two titles. But – if you really want to think about it, he still ain't Mike. You could have had him. So, mm -hmm. so because Houston won and because Elijah Wan was so great, you never hear people say they, they – Houston actually had the number one pick and Jordan went third. But mm -hmm. people always look at it as like Portland was the, the ones that screwed up. You're right. 
You're but nobody right. thinks about it. nobody. Nobody ever says that Houston screwed up because they did enough, and he was great enough, top fifteen player of all time, arguably, top twelve for me. But they also won, and it justified it. Yeah. So you have to make sure you get the right guy, and you have to make sure that you win with him. So it's not it's not going to be all about him. It's going to be all about Trevor. It's going to be all about your program. It's going to be all about Doug Peterson. Those are the things that's going to be important to determine how this looks, even if you don't pick the guy that ends up as the single best player in the draft. Yep. It's as you're saying that it's like, yeah, all right, Trevor Lawrence, you're going to determine whether or not this first overall pick works. Because <laughs> if you it's have crazy. success, the, you know, the, the rest of it will, will come together. And there are, are some great players. I'm not trying to downplay it because they're going to get a shot. Um, I, I would just – I think you're right. Like, if you're if you're picking 6th, 7th, 8th, I mean, oh, twist my arm. I got to end up with Kyle Hamilton or Sauce Gardner or, you know, if Stingley yeah. tests well this week. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> so, like, so what if – what if, So what if Jermaine Johnson is the fourth best – is the fourth defense, uh, edge rusher taken, right? And Jermaine Johnson, if I told you right here, right now, would you be shocked if I asked you, would you be shocked three years from now if Jermaine Johnson is an all pro and he's the best lineman in the draft? No. And that's so that's the part of it where if you're Jacksonville, if you can move, <laughs> you know, you certainly are open to the idea. And who knows? Like there are teams that are going to get quarterback hungry, maybe not move up to one. But get a quarterback hungry and want to move up at some point. All right. I'm just saying the Saints, there's a reason they made that deal earlier this week. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's just to sit and wait and see what happens at 16. They might, I they think, might get I think more that, aggressive. Yeah, and I think their defense is good enough right now that they have a window and they're trying to they're trying to address the, the look, they, I don't think they're ever gonna be bad enough to pick number one. They won't be. They're too good of an organization. But okay. They better not next year because they already yeah. traded their pick. <laughs> yeah. So guess what, man? If we're if we're that team, let's get two or three of these the same guys we talked about, the guys that might fall. Let's 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 get some of those guys right now and help our team and fortify us right now. Uh, mm -hmm. the Saints fans that I saw were ecstatic about that. I thought it was a little weird that Philly did it, but Philly almost looks like, hey, we've arrived. But I really do think that what Philly's doing is we talked about those quarterbacks. Well, there's three generational players in next year's draft. Um, CJ Stroud, Ohio State, the kid from Alabama, Bryce Young. Bryce. Yep. And his teammate, Will Anderson. So mm -hmm. uh, if those guys are in the draft right now, they go one, two, three. So what mm -hmm. I think some teams are doing is they're loading up to get in that draft because even if they don't get one of those top three guys, the, everything they will get is going to start of trickle down to them when you have those franchise guys. And then basically, because that draft is uh, loaded at the top, the currency of those picks is going to be worth more next year than they are this year. Make sure you check out the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast with Ryan Tracy and Eric Crocker. You got an analytics expert and a former NFL DB, and they break it down every single day on the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, which can be found wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe. Jamie, man, we pulled it off again. They let us come on here and give us the privilege to talk to the people on Locked On NFL, and we deliver. We actually talked longer than I thought we were going to because the conversation was so good. Yeah, enjoyed it, my man. Another Wednesday in the books. No doubt about it. You guys do what we always say. Take care of each other, and we will see you on the other side.